Hello and welcome back to my crazy electronics projects videos. This is for my Mega Wang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware. This is a new revision of the board which allows the use port to have RAM expansion attached to the Commodore 64. So this is just the schematic for that board. And this is the code that I'm going to be running. This initial code test just basically does some RAM writing and reading from a Commodore 64 and then tries to do a DMA test to the Mega Wang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware. So this is the kind of the pseudo randomized power on state of the RAMs in the Mega Wang video hardware. That's fine. As long as I'm getting a good video signal, then I'm happy. Now, if I run the program file, which was just assembled, it will try and talk to the expansion hardware, but also the RAM expansion hardware, the user port interface. Aha, apart from I don't actually have it plugged in. So, uh, yes, I need to connect the USB for the easy flash cartridge. I'm using my easy flash cartridge to run program files and uh, cartridge image files. Uh, I also need to plug in the USB for the user port interface. So the user port interface has an FTDI uh, USB to serial output, parallel serial output actually. It allows me to interface with the rest of the logic and the RAM chips on the board. So I'm getting an error at the moment, and that's that's because the board was powered up before the FTDI board. The FTDI board draws its power from the PC. There we go. If I reset the RAM expansion board now, now the internal latches have correctly initialized, and the C64 can talk to the video hardware. If I press fire, it does a very quick DMA transfer from the expansion RAM to the video hardware internal RAMs. That's what that small little band of flashing pixels is on the screen every time I press the fire button. It's transferring a, quite a large amount of data. Now, if I advance the test now, this is reading patterned data that has been populated on the RAM expansion by the Commodore 64. And then this randomized data here, pseudo randomized data is just the default power on initialization pattern, uh, which is pseudo randomized for the onboard two megabytes currently of, of RAM, which is on the user port interface. Let's switch the screen now back to uh, my Windows desktop. You know, I really need more screens. I've got a TV for the C64's output, but uh, I've, only, I've got two screens for my uh, desktop PC. Um, I could actually do with another screen for the uh, video hardware output. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use my USB interface, go into the FTDI to then populate on the user port interface, the expansion RAM. So the user, the USB interface can override what the Commodore 64 reads. So as it's populating the data, the Commodore 64 reads FF bytes. And this is what FF bytes look like when they are copied to the screen continuously. Now this demo here, I can move the joystick around, you see. The pattern looks different and that's because it's actually sample data and we'll be playing a sample in a minute, hopefully. But basically uh, this data can be scrolled around uh, with the joystick and it's just a good example of the Commodore 64 under program control rapidly pulling large amounts of data every frame from the external RAM expansion. It's actually really quick because all you need to do to get a byte from the external RAM expansion is just do a load, a load absolute with the um, RS-232 port, basically, which reads eight bits, it reads a whole byte all in one go. It's a very quick instruction, relatively speaking. Now this is the sample. 
hopefully you can hear that and try to increase the volume a bit but these white bars that you can see on the screen here are actually it, this is a volume update to the SID volume register which is why it can play back this sample that I hope you can hear in the background so this is actually playing back a sample at uh, 16,000 hertz or 16 kilohertz so this is 16 kilohertz sample playback on the Corridor 64 by pulling in large amounts of data from the external RAM interface. The USB external RAM expansion interface has an auto incrementing internal memory address as well and that's currently on the board, it's currently 24 bits so we can have up to Currently, a uh, maximum of 16 megabytes, but if it was 32 bits, then you could have a maximum of uh, what, four gigabytes of onboard memory. Uh, the memory just gets a bit expensive. But if I run this again, hopefully you can hear that the sample is playing again. So it's definitely under Commodore 64 control. I'm squirting over that same PRG file. Now because it's 16 kilohertz 4-bit um, audio, uh, the samples coming from the converted, this is a converted Amiga mod file, but it's actually converting, it can convert from, for example, WAV files as well, or any other kind of um, uh, UPCM data. Uh, my tool just basically converts uh, 16 or 8-bit samples uh, into 4-bit uh, pairs so you can have two 4-bit pairs per 8-bit byte and then it just squirts that to the RAM expansion interface. Of course the RAM expansion interface still works as it would with the, uh, the rest of the Mega Wang 2000 Turbo Edition hardware demos so this is the Shadow of the Beast demo which is uh, uploaded as a cartridge image to the Easy Flash. So when I ran it on the Easy Flash just now, it's just running on the Commodore 64. These, this is the Commodore 64 sending large amounts of graphics data to the Mega Wang hardware. It's not playing uh, the Shadow of the Beast music on the expansion audio hardware, and that's because it's not plugged in currently. I only have a much smaller board stack. But here's the two, uh, two megabytes of uh, static RAM on the board and there's the uh, schematic again so I use the Proteus design suite tool for designing the schematic also simulating the schematic uh, validating the hardware simulation works and then I can also use the Proteus design tool to then do all of the PCB layout and then exp uh, export all of the Gerber files and everything and PCBWay then very nicely made the board for me and basically as you can see the board worked practically first time so that's all I really wanted to show you for this new revision version 2 user port RAM expansion for Commodore 64 thank you very much for watching these crazy electronics videos have a great day evening or night wherever you are.